On the 6th of May 1984, in Irving, Texas, World Class Championship Wrestling held the first Von Erich Memorial Parade of Champions event that attracted over 32,000 fans to the old Texas Stadium, a seriously impressive number long before the days of WrestleMania. The fans in Texas came to pay tribute to David Von Erich, a man who had passed away mere months before the show. They also came to see the in-ring return of David's father, Fritz Von Erich, and they came to see an NWA World Heavyweight title match pinning challenger Kerry Von Erich against Nature Boy Ric Flair. This main event match provided fans with a feel-good moment that isn't talked about all that often, and today I want to take a look at the match along with everything that led up to the famous bout in Texas Stadium, along with the disappointing fallout of the match. So let's get stuck in, this is the modern day warrior Kerry Von Erich vs Nature Boy Ric Flair at the 1984 Parade of Champions. I've mentioned this before, but out of all the territories that existed before the WWF machine came along, World Class Championship Wrestling is probably my favourite. Owned by Fritz Von Erich, World Class had an excellent balance of in-ring action, storylines, good promos and good wrestlers. I sometimes find that some old territories could excel in one trade but seriously struggle in another, and some territories can contain nothing but match after match, which in turn doesn't make for a great viewing experience, especially today when fans are conditioned to expect more interaction through interviews, promos and storylines. Fans who filled the Dallas Sportatorium were loyal and very, very lively. Male, female, the young and old, you'd see all sorts of fans in that historic building having the time of their lives watching their favourite superstars, and it made for a much more pleasant viewing experience. The crowd reactions were infectious. The company also benefited from a more modern and up-to-date take on the presentation of wrestling shows. Long before Vince McMahon became the leader in show production, World Class invested in modern TV with music videos being displayed during shows, cleaner on-screen graphics in comparison to other shows on TV at the time, and well-produced vignettes to further storylines and introduce new characters. In a way, World Class provided a blueprint that other companies would greatly expand upon, but the point I'm trying to make is, a fan of today's wrestling can go back and watch world class shows quite comfortably because they've got a good pace and enough content away from the ring to keep things interesting. You can't mention world class and Texas wrestling during this era without mentioning the Von Erich boys, the sons of Fritz Von Erich who were easily the most popular attractions of the whole territory. Again, the age of the fans in the sportatorium didn't matter. Male or female, that didn't matter either. Everyone loved the Von Erichs and I promise you, you will too if you go back and watch some old world class shows. The brothers were featured in some of the biggest storylines the company ever produced, their battles with the fabulous Freebirds being the most well known and critically acclaimed rivalry in the whole promotion. The Freebirds had that thing going on too where even though they were heels they were still pretty damn entertaining to watch, and sometimes you might find yourself rooting for Michael Hayes and his band of merry men even when they were up against the Von Erichs. But that all makes for a brilliant and highly entertaining feud that also gained world class a lot of traction. WCCW was one of the most successful territories in the whole United States for a good few years, but repetitive real tragedies along with, let's be honest, awful booking decisions towards the end would eventually put a halt to the groundbreaking company. David Von Erich was seen as the big breakout star of the whole Von Erich family. Not only was he good in the ring and a good promo, but it's been said that he had a deep understanding of pro wrestling along with a lot of respect for the National Wrestling Alliance and the world title. In the WWE produced World Class documentary, a few guys interviewed said that David could have ran the territory himself if anything were to ever happen to Fritz, and it's also been widely reported and more or less confirmed that David was going to win the NWA World Heavyweight Championship from Ric Flair in early 1984. Fritz Von Erich, the family patriarch, looked at the championship as a holy grail despite never winning the championship himself. In Fritz's eyes, the title proves that you're the absolute best in the world, and Fritz wanted not only one of his sons to win the championship, but he also wanted a champion that hailed from world class. Having the NWA championship in the Dallas territory meant a lot to Fritz, so you can imagine how big of a deal it was when the championship committee reportedly voted for David Von Erich to win the belt in 1984. 
To build up towards the match, Ric Flair made disparaging comments about Mike Von Erich, saying that Mike wasn't good in the ring and not worthy of stepping up to the nature boy. So David made a challenge to Ric, a 10 minute challenge match. If Flair could beat Mike within 10 minutes, then David would back off and never ask for another shot at the NWA Championship. But if Flair was unable to beat Mike in those 10 minutes, then David would be able to name the time, place and stipulations for a Ric Flair vs David Von Erich NWA title match. On January 30th, 1984, at WCCW Wrestling Star Wars, Flair had the match with Mike and the Nature Boy couldn't get the job done. So that meant David was in line for a shot at the NWA Championship. Before the match could take place though, David took himself off to Japan for a tour with All Japan Pro Wrestling where he tragically passed away. The Von Erichs claimed it was caused by ruptured intestines or a stomach rupture that made him regurgitate and choke. The cause of death was officially recorded as ruptured intestines, though Ric Flair and others alluded to a painkiller overdose. The idea being here that the Von Erichs were possibly covering up the real cause of death due to Fritz wanting to maintain a squeaky clean image for his boys. But whatever the case, the Yellow Rose of Texas had passed away, leaving fans of world class in a state of disbelief and creating one of the biggest what ifs in pro wrestling history. To celebrate the life of David Von Erich and to pay tribute to his memory, Fritz booked the Texas Stadium for a special memorial show for David. The Parade of Champions name wasn't new. Parade of Champions events had been held as far back as the early 60s with Southwest Sports promoting such events. And even in 1972, Fritz challenged Dory Funk Jr for the NWA title in what turned out to be a 60 minute Broadway. But in 1984, the Parade of Champions came back as the first Von Erich Memorial Parade of Champions. It was a ballsy move to book the Texas Stadium, home of the Dallas Cowboys at the time. World class was white hot, but a stadium show at this size raised a lot of eyebrows. But, and I know this might sound bad, but Fritz was banking on fans filling up the arena due to their desire to mourn and celebrate David. Michael Hayes even said that a lot of the boys didn't care much about this show or what happened in the main event. They just missed David and they were still trying to come to terms with David being gone. But Fritz went ahead and booked the venue while also having a discussion with the NWA Championship Committee. Because Fritz felt that a surviving brother should still win the NWA Championship from Ric Flair. Details are sketchy here, but some reports state that Fritz didn't ask the committee, he pleaded to them to allow another Von Erich to win the belt. And seeing as the NWA had a good relationship with World Class, they decided to give it the green light and Flair would indeed drop the belt to a Von Erich at David's memorial show. Kerry Von Erich was selected as the new champion. Many would say that Kevin was the better, more polished in-ring wrestler, but Kerry had a better look, he had a better body, he was very, very popular with female fans of World Class and he would look harder to beat as he travelled to other territories and other countries to defend the belt. Ticket sales went up when the main event was announced. And again, according to Michael Hayes, when Fritz announced he was coming out of retirement for the event, ticket sales had another big boost. Fritz was going to team up with Mike and Kevin to take on the Freebirds, while the modern day warrior was booked to defeat Ric Flair in a monumental matchup and probably the most important matchup in world class history. 32,000 fans bought tickets for the show, it was already a big success before the first matches even took place. The matches from the David Von Erich Memorial Show were shown on ESPN and replayed again during weekly World Class shows on the same channel. While the full event isn't available on WWE Network, the broken up shows from World Class Weekly are available, so you can check out the Parade of Champions for yourself. As of the time of making this video, the event is also on YouTube. The Von Erichs defeated the fabulous Freebirds before the NWA title match took place. Flair comes out first looking quite stern and serious, and Kerry comes out wearing a robe that pays tribute to David. Kerry is clearly and obviously the fan favourite, but that doesn't mean he's gonna win this match. David, Kerry and Kevin all had chances at the NWA Championship in the past and they all failed to capture the gold, but admittedly you can sense just watching this one that something big was gonna go down. Remember how I said that Kerry was popular with female fans? If you watch this show with a decent amount of volume, your ears are going to get destroyed when the modern day warrior removes his robe. The women squeal when Kerry gets ready for the match. 
The champ takes his time at the opening bell, strutting around the ring and building a little anticipation. Kerry overpowers the nature boy and the referee orders a break at the ropes. Flair then takes Kerry down but Von Erich gets to his feet in good time. Kerry takes a little time to pose as the audience chant for the challenger and it can't be overstated how much this crowd was behind Kerry Von Erich during this memorial show. Rick again takes Kerry down and he tries to lock in some sort of hold to keep the challenger on the mat but Kerry wrestles his way out of it and Rick realises that this isn't going to be easy. The fans at ringside are beginning to get under Rick's skin and this just gives Kerry more confidence. The two lock up again and Kerry gets thrown into the ropes but he drops Flair with a shoulder block followed by two drop kicks. The nature boy backs up into the corner and now Von Erich knows that he's in with a chance. Kerry applies a side headlock and Flair tries to counter with a top wrist lock. Have you ever seen a crowd pop for a top wrist lock? Well, you can see it here. Kerry puts up a fight to ensure Rick doesn't bring him down to the mat. The crowd roars when the challenger puts the champ down. Kerry maintains wrist and arm control but he's forced to release the hold when Flair brings him to the corner. Rick isn't interested in a clean break, he instead rams his shoulder into Von Erich's midsection before delivering a few of those signature hard chops. Just when you think Kerry's gonna go on defense, he fights his way out of the corner and he fires up on Rick with a big right hand. He follows this up with a military press slam and once again Ric Flair is forced into the corner where he begs his opponent for mercy. Flair ends up going to the outside to get a breather while Kerry plays up to the audience. The two remain cautious as they circle the ring again. It goes back to the corner, this time it's Rick fighting out with a few chops and Rick punishes Kerry before throwing him out of the ring. Von Eric rushes back to the apron, he performs a sunset flip but he only gets a two and Rick then makes Kerry pay with another hard chop to the chest. The crowd goes nuts again when Von Erich applies a sleeper hold, Rick gets out by performing a back suplex and the fans begin to get restless as Flair performs a snapmare followed by the nature boy knee drop. Flair tries to put Kerry away with a suplex, Kerry kicks out at two. Out of desperation Kerry performs a drop kick but it only knocks the champ back to the ropes and Rick's able to reply right away with an elbow to the head. Kerry isn't out yet. He locks in an abdominal stretch that again makes the crowd go crazy. Flair complains about Kerry pulling his tights and Rick forces a break after a hip toss, but Von Erich gets right back up and he drops a few knees of his own. Even though Flair just complained about Kerry pulling his tights, Slick Rick does the exact same thing and he lays a knee into Kerry's midsection. Flair then puts Kerry down with a shoulder block and Rick then runs straight into a claw. This should be the match all over, this is the famous Von Eric finishing hold, but Rick again pulls Kerry's tights to deliver another knee to the midsection and the nature boy gets warned this time by the referee. Rick goes to the top rope, you know what happens next, he crashes to the mat hard and now Kerry's gonna make Rick pay for fighting dirty. Rick gets punished in the corner before getting sent to the opposite turnbuckles for the upside down bump. He begs Kerry for a little compassion but he gets another break when, for the third time, he grabs Kerry's tights for a knee strike. Kerry goes down, Flair tries to lock in the figure 4 twice and twice Von Erich's able to kick the nature boy away. The match then comes to an end when Kerry goes down after a shoulder block, he gets back up, he blocks a hip toss and it's a mere backslide that puts Rick's shoulders to the mat for the 1-2-3. A Von Erich just won the NWA Heavyweight Championship. The fans in Texas had attended the Parade of Champions to mourn and celebrate David Von Erich. They ended up getting one of the biggest moments in the whole state's professional wrestling history. There's a real joyous atmosphere when Kerry wins the NWA title and it's made even more special when the brothers rush into the ring to celebrate alongside the new champion. For that moment, for that night, Kerry Von Erich winning the NWA World Heavyweight Championship was right. No doubt the majority of you may have felt that this was only given to Kerry due to David's passing. Many of you may also have felt that Fritz asking the NWA Championship Committee for a title reign under one of his surviving sons after David's passing wasn't the right thing to do. But this kind of reaction and this kind of emotion is the kind of stuff that you can't plan, predict or book in advance. These are the reactions that make big moments legendary and it's a real, real shame that this title win doesn't get brought up as much as others of the era. Rick tells Kerry he'll be back, he sends a warning to Kerry, the brothers and Fritz Von Erich that the nature boy will return for what's his. He then leaves the ring and the celebration continues. Kerry lifts the NWA Championship belt along with the yellow rose, sending a message to fans that this title win was for brother David. He then gets a Texas flag and he uses it to wrap the championship belt up and he then goes into the audience to celebrate with his parents. The crowd mob Kerry as he makes his way back through the tunnel and that's how it all went down. 
The Von Erich celebrated backstage with the NWA Championship, no doubt there was a big party that night, and the family, along with the fans of world class, could now look forward to bigger and better things now that one of their own was the World Heavyweight Champion. Jerry Lawler went on record to say he really thought this would be the dawning of a new era for the NWA. This could be something big seeing as Kerry had the ability to bring in a ton of new young fans and attract new people to wrestling shows who maybe wouldn't have attended before, but the reign turned out to be one of the most disappointing reigns in the whole history of the NWA. Flair has spoken many times about the importance of being NWA Champion and what being the NWA Champion truly entails. Put simply, there were no off days when a superstar held this belt. As the champion, you were expected to travel from territory to territory, defending the championship against the best each region had to offer, and it wasn't uncommon for the champion to defend the belt on every night of the week, even twice on the same day on a few occasions. According to Flair on his old podcast, Kerry Von Erich missed his first defense. Rick said this, I landed in Dallas, I went and did the thing in the afternoon with Kerry, and then I took off to go overseas, and Kerry missed his first shot, they gave it back to me when I went to Japan. He was supposed to have it, he missed his first shot. I don't know where it was, and I don't know why he missed it. If there's any truth to the history, there are obvious reasons why he may have missed it, but once again, the greatest kid in the world, but we all have our demons. I was going over there to wrestle Harley Race, we were getting paid a lot of money to wrestle in Singapore and then in Hong Kong. We flew back into Tokyo, and they called me and said, you're gonna take the belt off Kerry, and we're flying him over there now. That's how it happened. Take Flair's words with a grain of salt here because Kerry actually did defend the NWA Championship before dropping it back to Flair 18 days later. He defended the belt against Terry Gordy and Rick himself in Texas, and he then went to championship wrestling from Florida to defend the title against the likes of Mac Rotundo and superstar Billy Graham. He also had a defense in All Japan against Jumbo Saruta, but then Flair joined in on that All Japan tour and Flair won the title back in a 2 out of 3 falls encounter. All reports state that Kerry was unreliable and others have stated that he missed it too, but what Flair said about him missing his first shot wasn't true. Kerry did travel to another state for title defenses and he even travelled to another country. To add more confusion to the story, Gary Hart wrote in his book that the rain was always gonna be 18 days and Fritz agreed to it being 18 days too. Gary said to Fritz that he shouldn't agree to such a short title reign because it would hurt Kerry in the long run, but Fritz was apparently under the impression that Kerry would win the belt again down the road. Plus, he wanted a title change for his memorial show, so he went ahead with it. If we look back at Kerry's schedule after winning the title, it sure looks pretty packed. He even wrestled twice in one day during his time in Florida, so I kinda struggle to see where any other dates could fit in. Basically, we just don't know what happened. Kerry did have his personal problems for sure, and others have talked about his reliability not being what it needed to be in order to hold a belt as important as the NWA Championship. We don't know if he missed the date, but we can definitely debunk Flair's claims about Kerry missing his first shot. We can see that Kerry's schedule was jam-packed after he won the title, and we also have Gary Hart stay that the plan was always for Kerry to only hold the belt for 18 days. Whatever the case, the reign was short, but Kerry managed to leave a literal lasting mark on the NWA Championship belt when he carved his own initials into the front plate of the championship. While the reign was short lived and while no one will call Kerry Von Erich one of the greatest NWA champions of all time, the Parade of Champions main event is a match that everyone should check out if just for the celebration at the end. There's plenty going on before and after the match that kinda sullies the big moment, there's a lot to be said about the integrity of the booking and the run that followed, but it's still must see viewing in my opinion. It's easy to get caught up in all the other stuff that surrounds big moments like this, and there aren't many people out there who can talk about the Von Erichs without bringing up the tragedies, I'm guilty of the same thing. But if you want to switch all that off and see a great moment in the history of the NWA, even if it was just a moment and nothing more, then the Flair vs Kerry Von Erich match comes recommended. Thanks for watching guys, and take care.